Okay, so today we're going to go through how to color um, a 3D printed uh, green state zirconia crown. Now this is printed with uh, Inocera slurry and with the Zipro D uh, ceramic printer. So the main thing is uh, you're gonna ch before we color it, we have to check uh, that your crown has successfully been debound or underwent the debinding stage without any cracks. So you've got to make sure that your crown does not contain any cracks. Um, and you can see uh, you check the outside and then you check the internal surface and yes there are no cracks. So this crown has been successfully uh, underwent the debinding phase. So today I'm going to be using a uh, mostly some Zircon Zahn Pretel color liquid, uh, coloring liquids. Um, I've got shade B1 here and what I generally do is I dilute uh, portions of the uh, coloring liquid. So I have the fully concentrated coloring liquid by itself and then I have two separate containers, one which is half diluted with water and another which is a third um, diluted with water and that will get me those uh, nice uh, shading gradients um, in a very controlled fashion so you'll need to dispense whatever coloring liquid you have um, to the ratios that you prefer so this is kind of like a bit of trial and error depending on which system you use but I generally feel that the one to one then the one to two and then the one to three ratios work the best for me uh, for the incisal effects, I'm going to be using uh, the UNC incisal effector coloring liquid and also a bit of the Zircon Zahn violet coloring liquid. Once again, it really depends on what you're comfortable with in your lab. Um, and it's a bit of trial and error, a bit of play uh, to see what really works well for you. And you can get a crown uh, from here, which is just freshly debound, to something like this. Uh, which is um, has passed the sintering phase so you can see that this is ready to um, undergo some further characterization with some ceramic stains so that's the result that you should get after you sinter the um, colored zirconia okay so first of all we're going to color in the cervical portion and I use uh, fully concentrated, um, so undiluted um, coloring liquid. So as once again, I'm using the B1, and I basically would color the cervical maybe third to half, like so. And you can see that the, the printed zirconia will absorb the stain pretty readily. I'm just going to move this over here. And as I said, you're just going to cover maybe about half to a third of the cervic cervical portion. And it shouldn't take too long because you will probably do the rest of your characterization with your ceramic stains. What we're trying to do right now is to get a decent base color uh, from where we can work with. All right. So, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. And then ev after every time, you uh, use a stain, you should definitely soak your brush in some water and make sure it's dry and clean when you move on to the next step. Okay. And you can see that basically I've colored up to this portion over here that's in the undiluted B1 stain. So I'm going to move on to the 1 to, oh, well basically the 1 to 2 ratio of the B1 and just paint it over there. You're cover, we're going to cover most of the rest of the tooth, okay?
So now you can see most of the tooth has been colored and now we're basically left with the incisal portion. So once again, we're going to clean our brush. Now all these dyes or coloring liquids should be water-based. They're better for your furnace and um, it's just an easier, uh, much nicer <laughs> system to work with. And finally, we're going to go to our most diluted version of the B1 coloring liquid. And we're just going to splash it on that incisal edge. So it may not be that obvious now, but when you fire it, uh, you'll definitely see that color gradient. What I might do is I might add a bit more B1 full or undiluted B1 just to make sure I get that rich saturation of color at the cervical portion. Alright, so now that we've pretty much colored the entire tooth, we're going to do some incisal effects, okay? So I'm going to use a, a, a different type of brush. Uh, I'm going to use a very thin type of brush uh, with my UNC incisal effector coloring liquid. And what I generally do is I'm just going to focus here. I'll basically approach it like this, parallel to the incisal edge, and basically paint it like this, okay? start seeing that blue effect. And you don't necessarily want to overdo it, but you do want to get some blue or incisal effects, just enough to be a bit visible. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And I'm going to do my final uh, effect or coloring, and that will be with the violet. And with the violet, uh, they're very thin um, strokes vertically. Um, and I'll just show you how I do it, once again, with a thin brush. Just gently. Like so. Okay. So now that is ready to be dried. You would put this in a toaster oven or under a heating lamp at about 70 to 90 degrees um, for about 15 to 20 minutes and you wait for it to dry and once it's dried you would put it in the furnace under your sintering cycle uh, which is going to take about five and a half hours and then you'll get something like this. which you can definitely polish and use as is. Or if you want some further characterization, you can use something like Mio or um, 
GC luster or any other ceramic uh, characterization paste or system uh, to really add some nice features. So that's basically how you would color uh, a 3D printed uh, zirconia crown.